Today we're going to be looking at four different three-dimensional objects, their volumes, the formula for calculating each volume, and how they are related to each other. So first, what is volume? By definition, volume is the amount of space, measured in cubic units, that an object or substance occupies. The four objects we will be looking at today are cylinders, cones, spheres, and for some basis information, rectangular prisms. First, let's take a step back and look at a rectangular prism. We are taught that the formula for calculating the volume of a rectangular prism can be represented as its length times its width times its height. If length times width sounds familiar, that's because that's how we calculate a rectangle's area. The rectangle we're looking at in this picture is this one right here. We call this rectangle in the rectangular prism its base. So, the volume of a rectangular prism can be represented as the length times the width times the height, or equivalently, the area of its base times its height. Cylindrical volumes aren't too different than rectangular prism volumes. We can also represent a cylinder's volume as the area of its base times its height. The only difference with the cylinder is that the base is now a circle instead of a rectangle. Knowing that the area of a circle can be represented by the formula pi times the radius squared, then using the same formula as before, the area of its base times its height, we can write the cylinder's volume as pi times the radius squared times its height. Now let's take a look at a clip to see the relationship between the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a cone. Keep in mind that these objects have the exact same height and the bases have the exact same area. The volume of the cone is exactly one-third of the volume of the cylinder, we can write this as the volume of the cone is one-third times the base times the height. So the volume of a cone equals one-third times pi r squared times the height. Now let's look at the relationship between spherical and cylindrical volumes. We see that the sphere's volume is actually two-thirds the volume of the cylinder. We can still use the formula we used previously, but we have certain things to consider. First, instead of calling this the height of the sphere, we would call it the diameter. Since we already have a value for the radius in our formula, we can convert the diameter into two times the radius. Also, notice that the sphere doesn't have any flat surface like the other two objects. Instead, we say the base is this flat slice that is at the widest portion of the sphere. So, let's write our new formula as 2 thirds times pi r squared times 2 r. Through the commutative property and multiplying our radial values, we can simplify the formula into 4 thirds pi r cubed. 